Okay, greetings learners and welcome to this session on chemistry form one. We are going to be dealing with the water and hydrogen. And uh, first of all, we want to say that uh, water is uh, the most abundant substance on the earth crust, occupying about 71% of the total space of the earth. Now, in this topic, we are going to be looking at the products of burning candle wax in air. Candle wax basically is a, is a compound containing hydrogen and carbon. Therefore, candle wax is a hydrocarbon. Now, what, what happens when we burn a hydrocarbon in the presence of air? <coughs> Let's say, for example, if it's a candle, burning a candle in the presence of air, a hydrocarbon contains hydrogen, as seen here, and uh, carbon. If these two burn in the presence of air, let's say hydrogen, hydrogen will burn in the presence of air, and air, the burning, the element that supports combustion in air is oxygen. So we can indicate oxygen here, and also here. The hydrogen will burn in the presence of oxygen to produce water. Remember, water is an oxide of hydrogen. Carbon will burn in the presence of oxygen to produce carbon dioxide. That means a candle will burn in the presence of air to produce two, two products. A candle burning in the presence of air will produce water and carbon dioxide. Now, what then will happen what then will happen if some metals like uh, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and sodium are placed in cold water. In that case, we'll have to look at, uh, we'll have to have our reactivity series somewhere here, where we have, that is potassium, sodium, lithium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium, Zinc, I think we can stop at uh, iron. The reactivity series looks like this. I'm the most reactive at the top, the least reactive at the bottom. Now, <coughs> if we take, for example, magnesium. No, let's take, uh, let's take sodium. What happens when sodium is placed in cold water. Sodium will react vigorously with cold water and it will give a product that is sodium hydroxide. and a, a gas. In this case, this product, sodium hydroxide, if tested, it is found to be an alkali. Thus, we call these metals 
up to this one, the ones that react directly, even though magnesium reacts a bit slowly, we call them alkaline earth metals. Now, what happens when the same elements react with steam? Steam is still water, but water in a in gaseous state. Now, let's take for example zinc and steam. In the case of zinc and steam, or magnesium and steam, if we conduct an experiment on magnesium and steam, we'll find out that um, magnesium reacts with steam to give an oxide instead of an hydroxide. Now, zinc will also do the same. We find out that zinc will react with steam to give zinc oxide and a gas why is it so steam which is water in vapor form of which water is hydrogen oxide, this time round reacts as an oxidizing agent. Because of the presence of heat and the nature of steam. Steam, remember, if we go back to the kinds of matter we have, we have solid, which are closely packed together. We have liquid, and we have gas. Steam falls in this category, and liquid water falls in the other category. The forces of attraction between these two categories may be different, and that's why in this, with the presence of heat, hydrogen oxide becomes an oxidizing agent and uh, the, the situation changes from when reacting with cold water and therefore we get an oxide instead of a hydroxide. <coughs> so in the next step, because basically we've seen that everything here is about hydrogen. So in the next step, we will be talking about how to prepare hydrogen. Hydrogen in the laboratory. So we shall meet in the next session and discuss on how to prepare this uh, gas. Thank you.